The Gospel for this uh, second Sunday in the season of Lent is from John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Doesn't your heart go out to the people of Japan I mean, they must be reeling from the disasters that struck their nation. And not just one, but three. First, uh, one of the most powerful ever recorded earthquakes, followed by a tsunami that, that drowned thousands of people, followed by a potential nuclear disaster, an environmental disaster. And how does one withstand all of that? You know, it was just a little over a year ago that we were watching with horror as the earthquake shook the people of, of Haiti. And, you know, when natural disasters like that happen, it's normal for us to ask questions like, why? Why did this happen? You know, science gives us answers, but, but we also ask questions of our faith. You know, where is God when things like this happen? Why did God allow this to happen? But underneath all those questions lies an even more basic question about God. Does God really care about us? Does God love us? Or is God angry at us? Is God punishing us for something we've done wrong? Have you ever asked those questions in your life? You know, in your heart of hearts, have you wondered maybe if there's been some tragedy or loss or pain in your life and you've wondered, is God punishing me? Is God punishing you? And underneath that question is really the basic question about the very nature of God. Does God really love me? You know, we want and we desperately need an answer to that question. When our Bible reading, Nicodemus came to Jesus, and I think he had some of the same kinds of questions, and he wanted answers. It says that he came to Jesus by night. Maybe he was embarrassed to be seen talking with Jesus, whatever. It didn't stop Nicodemus from seeking Jesus out and trying to find some answers. Nicodemus, I believe, was hungry inside. He was searching. And he came to Jesus. 
Rabbi, he said, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. It's almost, almost a confession of faith. And I think unspoken behind this statement of Nicodemus is, is his real question for Jesus. What is God really like? And more important, does God care for me? And I can imagine Nicodemus looking at, or Jesus looking at Nicodemus with some compassion, and he gave Nicodemus the answer that has become the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3.16. Let's try and say it together from memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. What is God like? What is God really like? And how does God feel about me? Here Jesus gives us almost a one-word answer, and that answer is love. In the midst of all the brokenness and the pain in this world, Jesus said that, says that the deepest reality of the universe is love. And if there's ever any doubt about how God feels about the world, Jesus says it again in the very next verse. He says, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Does God punish the world with earthquakes and tsunamis? Not according to Jesus. During Lent, we've been reading through this wonderful book called The Shack. Been exploring this fictional story about God's love healing our brokenness. If you came in through the double doors into the sanctuary today, maybe you noticed the sign hanging above the doors. It says, The Shack. This sanctuary will be our shack, the place where we meet weekly with Papa and Jesus and Sarayu, and if those names are a puzzle to you, you've just got to read the book. But in the book, the shack is really a metaphor for our souls, the place where we experience joy and love, but also where we experience pain and brokenness. And it's that brokenness that God wants so desperately to heal inside us. In fact, that's exactly what Papa says to Mac. He says, that's why you're here, Mac. I want to heal the wound that has grown inside you and between us. In a conversation between Mac and Papa, Mac finally gives expression to all of his questions and doubts about God since the murder of his daughter, Missy. And he says this question to God directly. If you couldn't take care of Missy, how can I trust that you can take care of me? There was the, the question at the bottom of all of Mac's pain, could he really trust in God? Did God really love him? And in the story, Papa responded to Mac's question this way. It says, tears began to flow down Papa's cheeks. Mac, I am so sorry. I know what a great gulf this has put between us. And I know you don't understand this yet. But I am especially fond of Missy and also of you. Isn't that the answer we all want and need to know? For God so loved the world. For God so loved Missy. For God so loves you. Isn't that little word so a treasure? For God so loved. God doesn't just love the world, but God so loves the world. Or in the words of the, uh, of the, the book, The Shack, God is especially fond of you. There's a particularly tender scene where Papa is holding Mac's hands. You know, in the story, the author portrays Papa as a large black woman. And Mac asks her again the question that shows he still distrusts Papa, still doubts 
Papa's love. The story says, Papa didn't answer Mac, only looked down at their hands. Mac's gaze followed hers, and for the first time, Mac noticed the scars on her wrists, like those he now assumed Jesus also had on his. She allowed him to tenderly touch the scars, outlines of a deep piercing. And he finally looked up again into her eyes. Tears were slowly making their way down her face. And she said, Don't ever think that what my son chose to do didn't cost us dearly. Love always leaves a significant mark, she said softly and gently. We were there at the cross together. Mac was surprised. At the cross? No, wait, I, I thought you left him. You know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Papa answered, <clears throat> You misunderstand the mystery there. Regardless of what Jesus felt at that moment, I never left him. Mac replied, How can you say that? You abandoned him just like you abandoned me. And Papa replied, Mackenzie, I never left Jesus, and I have never left you. <clears throat> When we are devastated by experiences in life and we start asking questions, wondering where God is and whether God loves us, Jesus reminds us that the deepest reality in the universe is love, God's love for us. And today God says to us, I am especially fond of you. And if we ask where God is, when earthquakes shake us and tsunamis overwhelm us, <clears throat> that's when we look to the cross. God is not above the world, controlling the fates of nature and humanity. Rather, God is with us in the midst of the earthquake and all of the heartache, suffering with us, holding us tightly and promising never to let us go. Wherever there is tragedy and pain, that's where the crucified God is. And if that's where God is, that's where God's people need to be, bringing help and hope to those who are in need. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.